Is it true when you play with the Locomotive Cuban, you went to France to play and you find the two Brindisi fans cheer to you? <laughs> yeah, it's true. Uh, right before the game, I kept hearing people speaking in Italian and I heard my name and I looked up. The two, two Brindisi fans cheering for me. <laughs> and uh, what, what was your feeling in that situation? I mean, it's exciting. I mean, Brindisi is a home, basically my second home. So to have Brindisi in the air where it's kind of crazy, but even also we played in uh, Kazakhstan mm -hmm. and there was a person with a happy Kasi, happy Kasi jersey on. So <laughs> Your jersey or general happy uh, Maybe it was a, just a shirt or something. Okay. okay. Just to have support everywhere is, is, is a blessing. It's a, it's a great feeling. Italians are everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> everywhere around everywhere. the world. And uh, you in uh, NCAA, you play for three uh, three college. Uh, what are your uh, main uh, situation about uh, that career? What are your best uh, feelings about the, your NCAA career? Uh, I mean, I think all three seasons I had fun. I mean, all the three teams I had fun different different places. My freshman year, making it to the Sweet 16. Um, at Virginia, making it to the Elite Eight. Like those are some of the biggest things at the end of the season to make it to that tournament. So to play in those moments is, is huge, huge opportunity and a, and a memory I'll never forget. And uh, when did you choose to go overseas, playing overseas after your college uh, career? Uh, I think around June after the draft when you really have a feel for if you have a chance to play in the NBA or not. So after that, I was kind of like my mindset was switched to focusing on going to play in Europe and a new opportunity overseas. NBA was uh, a chance uh, or not in that moment? No, I don't think in that moment. I did a few of the, the workouts, but I don't think anything serious was coming from it. And uh, you, NBA still is in your mind uh, for the future or not? <laughs> for sure. As a, as a basketball player, you always dream of playing at the highest level, which is the NBA. So if it ever happens, perfect, but if not, it's okay. No, nothing special. You, if you can stay play and play a good level in Europe, you can do it. Absolutely. Playing in the Euro League is a tough competition. Right outside of the NBA, it's the best outside of it. So, both of them are great competitions. You play in uh, Netherlands uh, more as a guard. You makes a lot of points. You were seen by a lot of teams. Uh, what did that experience bring to you and for your career? Um, I think I just, it just showed um, a little bit of what I'm capable of doing. Uh, most of the time, I'm always a point guard, but that year I happened to be playing with a, a really good point guard and a really small point guard, so it was better for me to play as a position two. Um, but it was good just getting to get here and compete in Europe for the first time uh, in the FIBA Europe Cup. It was good playing against different teams, so it was, it was a good experience. Do you prefer to play at guard or at point guard? No, point guard for sure. Point. I, I love passing, setting up my teammates, so... For me, my, my natural position is point guard. Because I asked to Simone Geoffrey something about uh, your recruiting. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said he's, he proposed uh, your name to Vitucci, but in the first time, he didn't accept. <laughs> the next time, uh, he pushed uh, your name and uh, Vitucci likes it. Uh, and switch your role from guard to point guard. It was difficult or is something more natural for you? It's It's easier for me. Like my whole life, I've always been a point guard. Maybe two or three years out of my whole career, I played as a shooting guard. But for me, those weren't the years that were the best for me. But when I play point guard, that's my natural position. I, I feel like I'm good at setting up my teammates, making the game easier. So when I go to Happy Casa, that was one of my main things. I wanted to go to a team that would let me play point guard again. Okay. So when Happy Casa offered me, and I asked him, Coach Vituji, we had a phone call. What position are we? I want you to be a point guard. Oh, perfect. Okay. <laughs> Say no more. I'm there. Okay. And uh, the first year in Italy was uh, hard, if I can say it. Uh, what changes from the first, your first year and the second year? First year in Italy? In yeah, yeah. Yeah, in the same. I think just playing in a higher competition. Uh, comparing the Italian championship to the Netherlands championship is two complete different things. Uh, so just getting used to playing with higher talent. Um, not being exactly the main focus on the team, being able to be the second or third option. So just learning from that, I had a really good scorer in Adrian Banks. I had good players in John Brown score. So I kind of had to do a little bit less, but try to help my team win. And then the second year, Coach Matucci told me, like, this is a year you have to make a jump. You have to show your improvement. And he gave me um, 
the position to do a little bit more and I, I just took advantage of it. You talk a lot with the Vitucci in particular after your first year and uh, he helps you to grow, grow your game. Mm -hmm. What uh, What's your relationship and uh, how much he helps you to make that step? I mean, he, he was huge for me. My first year, sometimes he'd be like, man, why, why aren't you playing like yourself? He's like, I can tell you're block, you're like, your mind, you're not being your full self. And then um, during the COVID year, uh, I happened to stay in Brennan City where I'm with my wife and her family. And Coach Petrucci knew I was there, and he he when he knew I was coming back to return, so he he's like, I want to help you to help you prepare for next season. So we would talk two, three times, maybe one or two times a week, just to to like mentally prepare for the next season. So that was huge for me, and then it it opened up our relationship and helped me improve and, and make a big step the next year. In the next year, Brindisi was a very fun team to watch, but a winning team. Mm -hmm. Uh, what was the secret of that group? There was a lot of talent, uh, but uh, a very good chemistry. I think everybody had uh, the mindset to, to de keep developing and keep improving. We had a lot of guys who weren't, say, the top level guys in Europe. So we wanted to prove that we're capable of doing that. And I remember one of the biggest things at the beginning of the season, everybody said, um, we just want to win. We don't care about individual statistics. We want to win, and once we, once we win as a team, everybody will have a higher step up if we do that. So when we when you everybody locks in on just winning and not caring about individual statistics, it's a special thing, and we had a, a really good group. You went to Milano and played probably the most uh, emphatic win of your season. Uh, you win here in Milan uh, during the regular season, and uh, you go at the top of the table, if I'm not wrong, in that game, after I that game. Uh, what was the feeling, your feeling, and the team feeling after that win? I mean, it's special. I mean, every, especially coming with not necessarily the top teams in Italy. When you play against the Milans, the Virtus Bolognas, that's when you go out and try to do your best. And for us to get the win and, and prove, at that moment, we were the number one team. It, it's, it's special, especially coming from Brindisi, which most would consider a smaller level club. It's huge. And for the small city to have the status of one of the top teams in Italy is it, very important. Uh, Milano hosts the final eight uh, of Italy Cup, but uh, your wife is near to have your uh, your son, son or daughter. I'm sorry, my daughter. My daughter. And, uh, it was a, a particular moment for you. I, you, your mind was here and there, I suppose. Yeah. How could you manage this situation? It's crazy because right now we're actually in the same exact hotel when my daughter was born <laughs> at this and um, in that same moment. So I was getting okay. phone calls two or three in the morning. I'm staying up to make sure everything's okay. My wife, I get the phone call. We had the baby. So I was like, perfect, perfect. I'm super excited. And then I try to have to flip the switch to get prepared for the game, but you just have so much excitement when you have your first first kid to be born. So in that moment, I was just trying to balance both. It was extremely difficult. As a man, you I suppose you like to be there with your wife for sure. instead of uh, playing. For sure. For because uh, players are person. Mm -hmm. uh, how difficult sometimes is to be a professional player, stay away from your friend, your wife, and stuff like that? I mean, it's extremely difficult sometimes, but like in these moments, you really want to be there to support your wife. But unfortunately for me, it was during the COVID period. So I wasn't, even if I want, if I could be there, I wasn't allowed to be in the hospital with her in this mm. period. So it was difficult, but we, we had to do what we had to do. And uh, after you went to Cuban and uh, in particular situation, unlucky situation, if, mm -hmm. case, if I can say that. Uh, how did that experience improve your game uh, as a professional player? Stay, I, I think it's hard to stay in Russia, longer journey, long trip, mm -hmm. uh, stuff like that. I mean, it was very difficult, um, but it also makes you feel uncomfortable in a way. But sometimes you need to be uncomfortable to continue to grow. Um, so me leaving, coming, leaving Italy, basically leaving my hometown, basically my new hometown in Brindisi and going there, it was a, a huge adjustment for me and also my family. But the season was going good and playing in Euro Cup, another step up in my career. Uh, we had a really good team, probably a chance to compete for a Euro Cup championship, playing with some really great players. So it was good. I was definitely learning and continuing to grow in my career. But unfortunately, the war happened and being that close to the situation with family just it just wasn't a, com uh, a comfortable situation. So it was, I just decided it was best for me to leave in that moment. 
You say brain disease is your second home. Uh, Italian fans wondering to have you as a playmaker of the national team. Is there <laughs> something could ever happen or not? I don't not? know. I mean, it, maybe it's a possibility in the future, but for right now, I'm not. I'm not sure. If if he, if he, there is a possibility, you if are. There's a possibility. Are, I'll for sure take it for sure. Okay, we. we I will be excited to play. We gave a hope for our <laughs> for our national uh, supporter, <laughs> and. Uh, Talk about Basconia, the I think is an uh, easy pick to go to Euroleague, uh, to a team uh, who develop uh, the players. Uh, I asked uh, the same question to Achille Polonara last week. Uh, what are the particular aspects uh, in Basconia helps the player to grow? Uh, for me, the biggest thing is they give everybody an opportunity. Um, sometimes Euroleague teams make you show your Euroleague player first and then make you go that way, but Basconia gives a lot of people, young talent, a chance to go and develop immediately. And one of the biggest things for me is because my agent had Achille Polonara, Simona Fantecchio, and he saw the growth that they had in Basconia and the development, the development process they went through, it was huge for me. And I, I told him, I want to go to a place that's going to let me be able to be myself and continue to grow because that's the most important thing. I want to continue to develop as a player. And Basconia, I don't know how many teams in Europe, but Basconia is a team that has a development coach, skill development coach. And for me, that was very important, very huge, because you don't see it that often. And coming from America, you, you almost always have like skill development periods in your season. And when I got to Europe, I didn't get to experience it. So when I knew Basconia had that, it was, it was a no brainer. I wanted to go there because I knew I was going to get a chance to play, be myself and develop while being here. Vitucci gives an opportunity to be yourself uh, on the court. Penaroya seems to be the same in this uh, in this season. What are the relationships between uh, two type of coaching and two type of coaching in your opinion? I mean, like you said, I think they're really similar because they both let their players be themselves to the full limit. You might see a, a player shoot a bad shot or two, but instead of the coach screaming and yelling at you, like, okay, play through it, keep playing. Like, if you make a mistake, you have to learn to keep going, keep playing. And when you have a coach that just gives you the absolute freedom, that's when you see the teams bonding really well and they go out there and give it their all because they know they have the trust of their coach behind them. And uh, you have three words to describe two great players you play with. One is D'Angelo Harrison and one is Marcus Sauer. Three words for both. <laughs> It's a difficult one. That the uh, three words that describes both of them. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Three words for D'Angelo and three words for uh, Marcus. I'll give them both electric, like electric scores, because one one basket they see one basket goes in any shot. It seems like the possible going win. Electric uh, competitors, both of them extremely competitive. Um, I would just say fun, fun basketball players, because. I see the fan support from both. When I was in Brennan City, how electric Harrison was, the whole town reacts to him in a crazy way. Like the love they have for him is amazing. And also Howard. I go to, we, we play against teams and the away teams are cheering for Howard to shoot more threes okay. because how crazy the moment is. But both of those players are extremely, extremely talented scorers and really well shooters. Uh, talk me something about uh, the last week game against FS. Uh, your block was amazing, but your game was amazing. You play, you had a career high in assist and PAR. Matthew has a career high in points. Uh, Rokas uh, in rebound. was an incredible game. Tell me something about the atmosphere and the game. I mean, the atmosphere was amazing. Right? The fan support and, and, and the boys arena was, was incredible. So a lot, of the, a lot of this goes to them, especially with us having to come back from 10 down. Late in the fourth quarter, you have to give credit to the fan support because it got so loud in there. One play, the ref blew the whistle. Everybody stopped, and you see a few people playing defense still, and the <laughs> offense is confused. Like, why are you still guarding me? The, the, um, the whistle blew, but it was a great game. You have two, uh, two teams that are really good at scoring and, and can score a lot of points. So I know even as a fan to watch this game and see how both teams are scoring was, was a, a great opportunity. But to see us come back and – continue to stay with it, being down, keep fighting to the very end, even after we've been on a losing streak, shows how our team stayed together and, and the toughness we got to fight back. 
What could be the goal uh, for this season uh, as a team? Uh, you played uh, very well for a long part uh, of the EuroLeague season. What are your goals in the EuroLeague and in the Liga? Uh, I don't think we really, we really haven't really set many goals. Um, but I think our biggest thing is just compete every night. No matter who we're against, the top team or in the EuroLeague or the bottom team in the ACB, no matter what, go out there and compete and show your character. Like, the biggest thing about Basconia is your character. So going out there and fighting, giving it your all, and if you do that, maybe at the end of the game, you always have a chance of winning. Name uh, the five uh, worst player to, pl to, to, to compete in the EuroLeague. The, the best of five player, in your opinion, you have faced uh, this year. I mean, it, it's difficult on the spot to pick because there's so many talented players on every team, really. You have former NBA guys, uh, really talented scorers, best defender, good, really good defender. So it's hard to just choose five players, but it's just a talented league with a lot of great players. And what about your Italian? Uh, is growing, uh, you can say something in Italian? Okay. <laughs> You're talking English in your family, I suppose. <laughs> no, I talk a little bit. Uh, I can understand Italian okay. pretty good, but my biggest thing now is being able to speak back. But if you have, a, like, if you talk to me, we could probably have a conversation okay. if you speak in Italian, but I would speak back to you in English. Okay, okay. So I'm, I'm learning, but I, I have to get better at speaking. Italy, Italian is not yeah, yeah, yeah. A, a, an easy language. <laughs> not so easy, but I'm learning. I'm learning. I completely understand. <laughs> Thank you so much for Thank your you time. Time.